WMIX is one of my favorite modules when it comes to GovLand. WMIX allows you to really get into the nuts and bolts of, uh, of the systems that you're managing um, using the WMI interface uh, to really report on some granular details or find that piece of information that is obscure and you know it's not in the registry and you know it's not anywhere else, but you need to really get your hands on some, on some great information and details when it comes to a Windows system and managing it. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to just go through two really quick slides. Uh, actually, just one slide. Um, just, to, just to discuss uh, what WMI is, just to get everybody up kind of on the same playing field so we can uh, all be uh, level here and, and have a good understanding of what we're about to jump into. So that being said, you know, this isn't a, a deep primer into what WMI is but it's how you're going to be able to use WMIX to access information. Um, so that being said, let's move on to our one and only slide, because I really hate slides. So this is our one and only slide, I promise. This is the only one you're going to see, and then we're going to get right into demonstrating WMIX. So the first thing is, what is WMI? It stands for Windows Management Instrumentation. I've actually seen that in a few different ways called something like Windows Management Interface and so on and so forth. But the official one is uh, Windows Management Instrumentation. Uh, what WMI is, is a spin-off or the Microsoft implementation of OMI, which is the uh, Open Management Instrumentation uh, interface that comes from the DTF, DTMF. So that's the Distributed Task management force for uh, coming up with a standard uh, standard way to collect uh, information about any kind of system that doesn't have to only be Windows. Um, and then uh, being able to uh, report on that information, tap into it, get, get anything that you need from it, and even execute tasks uh, based on what is in there. So WMI is a, the Microsoft implementation of OMI. And what do we use it for? <clears throat> well, we use it for managing local and remote Windows machines. Uh, so you can manage a local machine by running scripts and so on and, and querying WMI and running WMI methods to uh, perform actions and so on. And then you can also access WMI remotely through either remote procedure call or uh, through the WMS, WS man protocol, which will be using a little, little bit of PowerShell in here. So for everybody who's really uh, getting on their PowerShell game these days, we're going to really show you how uh, WMIX can help you uh, extend the power of your existing scripts or generate some new scripts to do some things. Um, so that's definitely part of what we're going to show here today. So that being said, we're done with slides. I'm going to close out PowerPoint because, you know, it's boring to watch slides. And we're going to jump right into it. First thing I'm going to do is jump into WMIX, right? So we're going to start the module. WMIX is a free utility that we offer uh, to anyone who cares to download it. Uh, you can get it right from our website. Once you install WMIX, you get the WMIX console here. Um, the first thing we're going to go over is how the UI is arranged, how you can connect to a workstation or a server through WMIX. So firstly, uh, like any of our other products, if you've, if you've ever seen any other government products before, we love our tabbed interface, right? So from here, we can create tabs of, <coughs> excuse me, any machines that we're remotely connected to. Um, so with that here, we can come to the connect button and just type in the IP address or host name of a machine in our network. So I might type in, let's say, the server that I like to deal with here, and then hit OK. So what we're doing at this point is we are using uh, the standard Windows protocols to be able to query the remote WMI uh, interface of the target machine. Now, in order to do that, um, most of the things that you need are usually pretty open firewall-wise uh, to be able to do this since we're using all the standard Windows facilities to do it, like uh, RPC and so on. So um, the only thing that you will be checked for at this point is if you have permission to access WMI on the remote machine. So of course, you need to be a local admin of the target machine. Now that could be 
you know, via domain admin groups or whatever, however you have it set up. Um, once you have that permission, you can go ahead and, and jump into the remote system. Now we do offer the ability to connect as, right? So I will just expand this here, right click and set connect as. And what you can do from here is you can say, you know what, I want to connect as the local admin or I want to connect as a specific domain account and then save the credentials. So what that will allow you to do is, is you know, if you have an admin account that you need to, to, to jump in here and, and, and uh, do some work, you can do that. Now, all the authentication stuff aside, let's get into what we can actually do with uh, WMIX. So the first thing you're going to notice here on the left-hand side, we have a favorites panel. <clears throat> Again, if anybody is familiar with government products, they've seen this favorites panel before. It's a way to organize the workstations that you want to manage. Um, what you can do with these favorites panels is you can right-click and add computers directly to them. And this could be just a short list of favorites that you constantly manage or, or things that you need to get into frequently. You can also add a container. And what that means is you can add an IP range, which is a dynamic container. And you can say, I want to add uh, you know, this system from here to there, uh, from this IP to that IP. And it will scan the IP range and dump them all there for you. You can also add AD containers, which is what I have here. And this is another form of dynamic container where you could just, um, if, if anything is added to the OU, it'll show up here. And of course, you can add static containers, which is just a folder. And then you can put all your systems in there if you want. The other part of the UI here is the uh, central browser view. And what we've done with this browser view, uh, if you know anything about WMI, it's arranged in classes. Um, which are, in a, in a sense, I like to equip, uh, make that the same as uh, a database, right? So a, a WMI class is very similar to a database table. A WMI class will contain information in it, properties, which are like the columns in the table, and the details, you know, and the data of that. Now, you can sit there and, and try to go through the namespaces as uh, these classes, or if you come here to the browser view, what we do is we take all that uh, programming, if you will, uh, way to see things and just dump them into these nodes here. And these nodes are common WMI classes that most administrators would need to access. So for instance, computer system, if I double click it, it returns me a WMI instance based on this remote machine. And a WMI instance is like a result. It is uh, the collection of properties for that machine that we're targeting. So here, I double-click computer system, and I got an instance. Right-clicking will reveal to me the, the, the options that I have. So some of the things you'll notice is that we have a properties area here, report properties, which will generate an HTML report, <clears throat> a script generator, which will generate a script based on the details that we're seeing here. And then below that, we also take out the WMI methods and show them here. And a WMI method is an action that you can run on the target machine. So for instance, if I wanted to rename this workstation, I would come in here and supply these three parameters. These arguments are required for the WMI method to do its job. So I can come in here and set the new name, set in the password, and the username that's required to rename the machine. That could be your, you know, your domain name, username, and password. And then execute this method on the remote machine. Uh, some of the other things that we have in our arguments pane here, just to, to give you a look, we have a description section here. This information is returned directly from TechNet. So, all of this stuff that you see here is exactly what you would see in the TechNet article that corresponds to this method and class. And the same goes for this uh, information area down here. And then you'll actually see that all throughout WMIX. So here, if I click on Win32, I'm sorry, Computer System node, uh, you'll see this information, which is, again, all pulled from, uh, from uh, the TechNet article. You can actually open the class definition or the reference web link. So if I click on that there, it's actually going to open the search 
for the Win32 class. If you click on there, you'll be able to see all of the properties and methods of that class. So it's a nice little shortcut here for getting to, you might, you might run into a class and say, what is that? What is that for? I want to know a little bit more about it. So you can use that right there. And uh, also in the information pane, we've got the uh, available methods to execute. Another uh, pane that I want to show you here is the trace pane. So anytime we run a query, whether that's uh, through the browser view or any of the other views, the trace pane is going to actually show you the queries that were run in a history. So for instance, if I wanted to uh, query all the logical disk, it's going to show me down here what query was run. And if you notice, the queries are very similar to SQL. They're very similar to SQL, but they're called WQL, the Windows Query Language. Very minute changes and differences, um, but I'll show you how to generate some of this stuff and what it looks like uh, as we move along. So anytime you do some query, the trace pane is going to show you the query that you run so that you can use that later on for reference. So let's jump into some further details here. I'm gonna, we're gonna come back to this in a minute and show you some of the cool stuff. I just wanna get through the UI parts so that you can understand where everything is and, and how to access it. So what we have next is the namespace view. And this view here <clears throat> is more uh, of a physical representation, if you will, of what is going on and what is in the WMI uh, repository for this uh, workstation or server. So what we have here is a hierarchy. So we've got the WMI hierarchy, which is, of course, you've got the root namespace at the top. And each one of these with these little cylinder views here is another namespace. So you can think of namespaces as individual databases. So the namespace contains classes, which, as I explained before, are kind of like tables. Um, so, for instance, if we go into SIMV2, it's going to, right now, WMAX is going to query the machine and uh, discover what classes and namespaces are available for it. Um, so you can see that the, you'll have namespaces buried inside of namespaces. So there is a hierarchy there. But eventually, you'll hit the classes. Um, let's give that a second. Sometimes, depending on how many objects in there, it could, it could take a minute to... to uh, to pull everything out. And as you can see here, there are some also some namespaces that are just sitting in the root of, uh, of what you're looking for. And let's, let's uh, browse through some of these while we're waiting for the connection there. Uh, we've got some in directory, which I know uh, this has some uh, active directory parts in it. Um, Microsoft, uh, okay, so here's the expanded version of SIMV2. Now, I focus on SIMV2 specifically because it has, I, I want to say about 80 to 90% of the information that you're going to look for when it comes to a system is going to be right here in SIMV2. So in here, you can look at the power namespace, uh, security, terminal services, and so on. Um, if you want to look at software licensing product, which will, it has a lot to do with activating Windows, um, that's a, a class that you can view there. Now, you can show these in uh, also what we call friendly names. So basically just, you know, separating everything out and uh, being able to read it nice and easy if you're looking for something. Uh, I kind of prefer the WMI names because this is what you would actually search for if you're going to do like a Google search and say, I want to know what Win32 codec file does. Um, we can also show association classes, which are... Association classes, again, like databases, are like that association table. So it's like um, if you have a logical disk, which is a part of uh, a physical disk and a volume, association classes will associate the logical disk to the physical disk and volume. So again, that's just a little bit more about how WMI is arranged. I typically keep those off because they can kind of clutter things. And for the most part, if you're looking for just direct information, you're not going to have to worry about the association tables right away. So this is the namespace view. This is if you really, you know, you know what you're looking for. You have to uh, uh, zero in on that specific class. Um, here we'll look at uh, one specifically, uh, Win32 disk drive. 
So if I right click it, I'm going to select query instances. And what that's going to do is give me the physical drives of that target machine. So the Win32 disk drive class, again, it's all here, all the information that you're looking for, information pulled directly from TechNet. So you can see it right there and, and get the description. So whenever you uh, return an instance uh, in the namespace view, you're going to see the instance right here in the instance pane. That's a little bit different to the browser view because the browser view is really designed as a drill down interface. But here, you're going to see the instance pop up. If you right click, you can select properties. And these are the properties, the available properties of the Win32, um, Win32 logical disk class. So here, you have your properties and then you have your values on the right. Um, so here you can get a lot of information, such as the disk serial number, um, the status, and I believe this, is, this has to do with the smart status of the machine, of the disk itself, um, <coughs> excuse me, total heads and sectors, and again, all that low-level WMI info that you really, really might need to get in, a, in an emergency or you need to collect some really great detailed information on. So, so far we've, we've gone through the browser view, and in the browser view you can return instances in a lot more of a nice, friendly, uh, drill-down sort of uh, aspect, and then we have the namespace. But what if you don't know exactly what you might be looking for? Uh, so what we have here is a search box, and this search box will allow you to um, search for something that you might need uh, within WMI, and you don't exactly um, have the class name handy or you can't find it for whatever reason and uh, you can't really narrow it down with the browser view. So for instance, if we needed to do a search, we might want to do a search for uh, a class, one of my favorite ones, is win32 underscore ping status. And, and what you could do in this case is you're doing a search for the class and you want to see where it is in the hierarchy. So that's that. Uh, but let's say you do know that there is something out there uh, there's a class that has to do with ping. You can just type in the word ping, and it'll do a partial search. And then you can choose the namespace that you want to do the search in. Uh, for the most part, everything is going to be in SIMV2 unless there's something very specific. So I'm going to click search, and we'll kind of let it run through and see what objects it returns back. So the ease of being able to search WMI, that's kind of a big one. That's kind of a big one. WMI by itself is, is, is very big. Sometimes it's not organized very well. So the ability to search for something and, and uh, find out the classes that you need to find out um, to get some details about it, and then, of course, to focus on it, you'll be able to do it uh, with, uh, with WMIX. So here we're returning a bunch of searches. Um, this one might have been kind of big. We probably should have chose a shorter one, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to abort this here because there's a tons of things that's probably got the word ping in it. So here what we're doing is we're returning all the objects and the class names for uh, whatever we're looking for. So I just happen to know the one that uh, I like to use is uh, Win32 ping status. So we'll just do, we'll just return that one. And I'm going to tell you why I love this one so much. <clears throat> We'll let that do a little search there, just to just to return it and show you how I can how we can uh, focus on it in the tree view. So there is our ping status. I'm going to abort it here because I know already where it is. And then if I hit insert selection, it's going to tell me it's going to put it right here in the browser view, um, so we can use it. Now, if I oops, really what I wanted it to do was find it here. Sorry, let me do that again. The uh, the search screen changes its its uh, its state based on where you are, and uh, since we were doing that in the browser view, it gave you the ability to insert that right into the browser view if you want to use it later. So Win32 ping status. Okay, back on track. So here we're just gonna again search for what it is that we're looking for. <clears throat> Sometimes you want to know where it is in the hierarchy. Um, and we'll get our result here, and then we're going to hit set focus, which is going to bring us to it in the namespace view. 
And of course, with our searching here, you know, we can search by the object names and the methods and the descriptions and even association tables if you wanted to. So there's our Win32 uh, Win ping status. All right. So I click Set Focus, and here it is here. <clears throat> now, this uh, particular class, what this one does is it executes a ping command. Now, the reason why I like this one so much, however, is let's say you're monitoring a couple different servers, right? Let's say you have, let's use Exchange, for example. And uh, let's say you have um, your, da your, your database server, uh, I'm sorry, your, your mailbox server, and then your client access server or something like that, right? So you got two different servers. Um, your typical traditional monitoring system will monitor the connectivity of the uh, remote systems in terms of itself. So you've got your monitoring server that's sending out pings to all these machines and everything is great. But let's say you've got your two servers that you need to make sure can talk to each other. You kind of miss that in your traditional uh, monitoring view. So what Win32 ping status does, it just sends a ping. That's its only job. However, since we are talking to it by, um, since we're talking to it through WMI remotely on this machine, I can tell that machine to ping another machine. So therefore verifying connectivity between two systems. Now I'm going to use that, uh, this here, to segue into the query builder, which is the third pane down here. Now the query builder is a really nice handy tool that allows you to build a Windows query language query. And like I said before, it's very similar to SQL. Um, what we can do with the query builder is create a query and use the method to actually do something. So here in the query builder, we can use the query wizard to begin to build this query. So the first thing you need to know is your class. What class are you um, trying to hit? So here we give you, uh, of course, all the ones that are in the browser view exist here, including ping status, which is what I added uh, before. So I can select ping status if I want, or you can actually type in uh, the class right here. So Win32 ping status. So I can click Next. And WMIX will return all of the properties and allow me to choose which properties I want to see or change. So here we'll choose one or more because we want to do every single one there. And the, uh, the properties I'm going to choose here are, let's see, we're going to choose uh, protocol address resolved. And what that does is it will resolve the host name of the IP that we're about to give it. Uh, we might want the response time, right? So maybe um, how long it took the ping to, to travel around. And also, of course, we need the status code. And the status code is going to tell us if it's, if it's successful or not. And there's other things in here, too. You can record the timestamp of when the ping was sent and so on. Again, very low-level detail in here um, that you can really get a flexible uh, implementation from. So I've chosen the three objects that I want to see in the return of this query when we run it. Now here, you can specify a query filter. And this is just a fancy way to say the where clause, right? So if you're familiar with SQL, it's going to be select something from something else, where, and then you can determine you know, what little bits and pieces you want to filter out of your, of your query. So the same thing is going to happen here. So I'm going to specify a filter and then click Next. Now, obviously, we don't want to return every ping to everything from that remote system. We just want a specific one. So that's where this WHERE clause is going to come into handy. So if I click Add here, I can select Address, which is who I want to ping. Address is equal to, and what's nice here is that you get that SQL uh, you know, uh, flexibility. So you might do something where it's like, meaning it could do a subnet, which is kind of weird, but you can do that as well, or not equal to, so ping everything that is not this. You get really, really flexible in there. 
So I'm going to ping what I know is a internet DNS server, right? But of course, this could be your client access server, and then you're putting in the IP address of your mailbox server. So you want to make sure that there's some connectivity between those two systems. So I'm going to hit OK, and there is our condition. Now I'm going to click Add, and then give it another condition. So we could say um, where the you know the ping obviously is that 4.2.2.2, and then we yes we want to resolve the name. So I'm going to come down here to resolve address name, and of course because we can know the data types that are in there, we know that this is a true or false value. So we that's why the conditions now are limited. So WMIX not only allows you to browse it, but it understands all the underlying data types. So it it knows when to limit. You know, there's no point in giving you like or and so on because government already knows that and WMIX can tell you that information. So we're telling the query, yes, resolve the name of this because maybe we want to do a DNS check too. So here's our where clause. So it's going to be address equals and resolves equals that. Um, you can switch this to an or. You can really build a nice tree map here of of your of your query to really get the get in there and, and get some really nice workflows going. So here I'm going to click Finish, and here's our query, right? It's a little harder to see there, so you can click this button, and it'll jump right up into the, uh, this, the query string area. So now we have our query. These queries can be used in lots of different locations. You don't only have to execute actions right here through WMIX. You can take these queries and put them into your own scripting, or maybe you might have a GPO filter that you need to create. Use the WQL query builder, create, create those GPO filters. You, know, you might have a GPO that you only want to apply to Windows 7 workstations. Well, you can come in here, select operating system from, or select caption from Win32 operating system, where caption equals Windows 7 or begins with or something like that. And then you take that and you apply it right to your GPO filter and your GPO will filter who it applies its settings to that way. You can also use this if you're using SCCM, right? So SCCM has a nice little area where it's called queries. And all queries are are exactly that. They're WQL queries. They look ex almost exactly like SQL queries, but they're not. So if you, if anyone has any experience there trying to say, oh, you know what, this looks like a SQL query. Let me do this. And then you run into an error because a certain syntax is used. You'll know why. But with WMIX, you can generate that query, pop it into your uh, query builder in uh, SCCM. It'll generate queries. And, then for, of course, those queries you can use all over uh, SCCM. So now... After I have my query built, I can select Run Query. And what it does is here in the trace pane, you see the query that was run and the instance that was returned. Now, it looks a little funny because this is just how WMI returns the information to you. But if we right-click it and go to Properties, you'll see the properties of this query that we ran. So we tried to ping 4.2.2.2. Um, buffer size is default. That's just how big you want the, the ping to be. Um, Address resolved. So this is the address that it resolves. And of course, that's a level three DNS server that, you know, it's just public. Um, we set it to resolve the name true, so that's why you see that. And of course, the status code is success. So this is returning a Boolean value to you, a true or false, a yes or no, um, in the return. So that way, if let's say you're you're using PowerShell, for instance, and of course, you know, PowerShell has a facility for this, but just using this example, you can return it into your script, get that true or false, and then continue to do stuff based on that. So, so far we've covered the browser view, how easy it is to jump in there and do some things. Uh, the namespace view, if you're really into, into you know, drilling into your WMI classes to see what's available to you. Um, and then, of course, the query builder. Uh, and one other thing I want to touch on just... Uh, before we move on to reporting, is this namespace view. So uh, most machines, for the most part, you know, in, in a Windows, on a Windows workstation, will have very similar information here. But third-party software is also allowed to create their own WMI namespaces for the purposes of their applications. So if I, since we're here on a server, for instance, 
we actually have a namespace called, where are you? I think it's under Microsoft. It's under Microsoft, let me see here. It's, uh, you know what, I'm not sure. So we're gonna use the search. <laughs> I forgot to put it in my note. So Win32, I know it's called server feature. So what this class does is, <coughs> excuse me, it will, um, here, let's make sure we're up here because we want to search at the top. Uh, Win32 underscore server feature. And you know what, we're going to include Microsoft too because I think it's in there somewhere. I just happen to forget. Uh, so we're going to include everything in Microsoft. And you know what, maybe even in Windows. I'm not even sure, but we'll find it. And uh, what I like about this class is that it will just report to you all the features and roles installed on a server. So <clears throat> this is specific to Windows Server. What you can also find is, let's say you're using, again, I'll use SCCM as an example. The Config Manager agent installs a WMI class on all the workstations that it's installed on. So one thing I used to always hate about working with SCCM is that uh, sometimes I need to forcefully execute a machine policy retrieval cycle. And, you know, nowadays you can kind of do that a little easier with SCCM. It's, it's coming along a little bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But uh, one of the things that I discovered is the SCCM class has a method to execute that policy retrieval cycle. So what that means is you can kick off, you know, if you if you if you are in SCCM and you want to kick off, you know, the this the agent to go ahead and, and get its latest task, you can do that remotely through WMIX. Um, so here I found my server feature. I'm going to set focus on it, and there it is. Okay, great. I have my server feature. Now, if I go to query instances, it's going to return all of the server feature instances. So if I right click on it and go to properties. You'll see this is this server ha is also a remote desktop session host. Um, you can actually report on all the information that's in there as well. So now we're going to move into the the reporting uh, aspects of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and move this into the browser view because it's a lot easier to to, to work for, with from there. So now WMIX has added this node right here to the browser view server feature, and I can right click. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, double click it, and we're going to get all the results from it. And now we can report on the instances. Now, WBX has a little reporting engine built into it that can output um, HTML reports. So if I hit report instance, it's going to create an HTML report with the information that I asked it to. So here is the all of the roles and features installed on that machine. So we can expand this to all, and these are all the roles and features there. So if you ever had to do a sweep and say, I want to know all of my IIS servers, so you need to see which ones have the web server role. Uh, you can actually type in the search box here, and it will narrow down uh, the results for you. So if I wanted to see, yeah, this has a remote desktop, yep, remote desktop services, session host, um, the license diagnoser, all that stuff is installed here. Um, another great thing we can do with reporting is that we can add it to a report template. And so we can use it later on. So report templates are really great and easy to create. You click here on the report template button, and then we can click add, right? So here uh, we can add, let's say, server features, and roles. We're creating a new report. And here you can add a query directly, right? So you can literally type in your query. So select this from that, where this equals that, and it will give you that really nice uh, compact area uh, with all of the, uh, the report bits in it. Or you can select an object that you want to report on completely. Uh, in this case, we'll have to add an object from here, which is Win32 underscore server feature search. And we'll just have to pull it from the search results and, and uh, send it in there. So this is this report template, you can actually run on all of your favorites. 
So I'll show you that in a second where you can just right click on the folder and select run this report on everybody there and you will get a report from everyone who's, uh, who's uh, showing up. Now while this is going, I just want to repeat to everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat section there. Um, and when we get to the Q&A section, which will be coming up uh, in about 15 minutes, um, I will answer the questions uh, right from the chat area. So here is our Win32 server feature. Let's grab that, put it in there. That is what we're going to report on now. So now we have our report template. So if I close here and I come up here, I have report, server, roles, and features. Now we can do some other reports, which are canned, which are nice. Uh, if I go to report, you can do general system information, installed software, or hard drive details. So if I click hard drive details, I'll run this one just so you can see. Um, we're just going to add these all down here, which I'm going to submit this for an improvement because we shouldn't have to choose all those. That's okay. We're always growing around here. We're always changing things just to make sure that we have the most comfortable experience for everyone uh, so they can do their jobs. So we're going to select the output destination and finish. So right now, WMIX is collecting all that information. If you notice in the background here, the, the trace pane is going crazy because it's querying everything and gathering all that data for you per machine. And it's going to put that into a nice HTML report. Um, just another uh, point to mention, anything that you see that we're doing here, of course, you can do it in our uh, Govland management suite. Um, it provides a, a nicer interface for getting to details and um, allows things like uh, custom automations and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, you can extend the suite with WMIX. So if you're used to using something like scope action, you can, uh, let's say there's something in the uh, scope action menus where you can't exactly, uh, you don't find the information that you need. <coughs> Excuse me, we're recovering from a cold here, so a little cough going on. Um, if you're in scope action and the menus don't have something that you need, you can take a w, WMI query that you generated in WMIX and import it into the WMI menu so you can use it again with all the things that you have. So here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> here is our uh, WMIX report. Uh, we, we wanted to know all the hard drive status for these workstations. If I click on it, here are the details. So each class is queried. Um, you can find out things like free space and you know, drive information, everything that you want based on those classes that were queried. And of course, you can browse through all the machines that way too. So you can click here and go to this one, check out this one, and go to another one. Uh, so very nice, flexible um, HTML tables here. So again, you can do inventory reports based on this. It gives you really quick, easy to use reports where you just use the search box type it in to filter all the information out. Um, and as well as, you know, using, uh, uh, you could do, you know, software inventory and so on uh, through these uh, this report template. Now I want to talk about my favorite, absolute favorite feature of WMIX, and that's script generation. That is hands down my favorite part of WMIX, especially since we now support PowerShell. Um, you can choose VB if you want, VB script, but that's kind of old and annoying. I don't like it anymore. Uh, PowerShell is definitely the way to go. I'm pretty sure you all hear this all the time anyway. PowerShell, PowerShell, PowerShell. Well, if you're new to PowerShell or experienced with PowerShell, WMIX is going to have something for you as far as uh, getting to information on workstations using PowerShell. So if anybody is familiar with using PowerShell, get WMI object is probably used all over the place. It's the way you retrieve information uh, from a system where you don't have a native commandlet to do that. So I'm going to give you an example of some of the, some of the things that this uh, this looks like. Uh, let's see. Let's do computer system. <clears throat> this is always a good one. So I'm going to right click here, do script generator, and I'm going to select query class instance. So what this is going to do is generate a script, a fully functioning PowerShell script, 
uh, that we can use. I'm going to just save that. Ties the default directory. And oh, the ice is not there. All right, let's use code. Normally, on your system, this will probably start up in the uh, PowerShell integrated uh, services environment or something like that. It's called the ice. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So here we have a fully functioning PowerShell script. You don't have to know anything about this code. You don't. This here, I'm just showing you just to let you know that this is a fully managed code. You don't have to know anything about what's in here. The only thing you have to do is know how to execute it and how it works. So I'm just going to jump to the top here just, so, just to show you a little, little something. This script you can run in PowerShell, and it supports parameters such as computer name, and you can provide a list of computers. So what that will do is it will generate the, the uh, PowerShell script, if you pop in a list of machines, uh, the script will go out, retrieve that WMI information, and bring it back to you in PowerShell. I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm just going to close that off in the background there. And let's CD to where these scripts are saved. Oh, right. OK. So it's uh, up, up, up. Here we go. CD to desktop. No, no, not desktop. Uh, documents, right. And it is WMIX scripts. And there we go. So the script that I generated is right here, WMIX query instances computer system. You can save that as whatever you want it to be, obviously, when the dialog pops up. Um, so what we'll do is we will run this script. So uh, we're going to run this script without any parameters. What it's going to do is query my local system, right? So here, it has queried my local system for the details that are in that class. I can decide if I wanted to. I can say, you know what? Let's do another machine. Let's try my, my test server. And here are the details from that server. Now, what does this mean? I mean, I mean, this is great stuff, but if you're really into PowerShell and you've got your own custom scripts, you say, you know, I got some scripts that already do that. Well, you can actually add this into your workflow, right? So I can do something like dollar computer stuff, right, equals that, right? And as, you know, I'm going to do it on computer lab B 2 k 12 okay. <clears throat> Is that right? S. R. V. 2K12. Okay. So, what that's going to do in PowerShell world is, uh, oops, <laughs> I did that wrong. Okay. I'm using a keyboard here that I don't normally use. Okay. Dash SRV. I think it's actually there. 2K12. Let's see. Oh yeah 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 yeah. SRV dash two K twelve. All right. Now WMIX will not help you with uh, you know fat fingers. Okay. So now what that has done is is retrieved all the WMIX information for that machine and placed it into this variable for us. So if I run that, it gives us the details. But this is also a PowerShell object. So I can do dot and then go through each of the PowerShell objects. So our scripts, um, what they do is not, <coughs> excuse me, they generate the code for you. Uh, they also create fully functioning PowerShell objects that you can then use in your own scripts. So let's say I just wanted, um, in this case, dot now, this is specific to that server because that's where I um, chose to with the, uh, with the parameter. So, oops, I keep doing that. All right. So, let's say we wanted boot up state. So, this is a, did it boot into safe mode? Did it boot normally and so on? I can do that here. And that is now normal boot. It tells me what, you know, from that system. Um, so, we've got WMIX giving you the ability to browse through WMI, 
giving you the ability to query anything you want through the workstations. Anything that's in WMI, you can do there. You have the ability to export scripts, create reports, um, have these scripts that are fully functioning. You can use them in your PowerShell objects. They create their object, their own objects for you, and so on. Um, getting a deep dive into all this stuff here, um, getting into all the information that you can possibly retrieve from WMI in a nice, easy-to-use package. And what makes it even better than that is it's free. Go there, download it, use it, use it all you want. Um, it's, it's something that I use every day as far as system management is concerned because these days things are more and more PowerShell heavy and uh, the WMI repository is actually expanding. You'll be able to use the WMI repository in so many different ways um, for workstations and so on. So if you take a look at something like you know, desired state configuration and so on, you'll see that this is very WMI heavy. Um, so from a top to bottom standpoint, uh, all the talking points are kind of gone through. Um, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and pop it right into the chat session if you want. Um, <clears throat> right now, we've got no questions. And I know somebody's got questions. Come on. Give me some questions here. Let me know that you're, you, you aren't you know, knee deep in your lunch right about now, especially if you're in, on the uh, East Coast here. Um, but it's okay if you don't have any questions. I'm not going to force you. I don't have a, a PowerShell script that will force you to tell me, uh, to ask me any questions. Um, but I do want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank everybody for showing up and taking a look at what PowerShell, um, I'm sorry, not PowerShell, what WMIX has to offer. And you're welcome, Pablo. Uh, you are welcome for, you know, coming and taking a, taking a look. Um, again, it's free. Anyone can use it. I suggest um, it, it could be a great learning tool for, for understanding how WMI works, uh, for executing tasks and, and gathering information on your workstations. Um, we have some tutorials that you can use to, like for instance, using Win32 ping status. You can check out govland.com slash support, click on tutorials, and you see all the great scope action tutorials that actually use WMI and WMIX to help out with uh, getting things done. Um, and if no one else has any questions, we are just about done here. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for coming. This will this has all been recorded. We're going to be putting this up, of course, on our YouTube channel and all the other places that we put videos so you can refer to it later on. Um, and of course, you can always send us questions. Again, govland.com slash support. Click on the chat button. Click on the submit a, an issue button. Or you can always give us a call, however you want to do it. Twitter, Facebook, we're all there. We're all over the place. So again, thank you, everyone, for coming, for showing up. Excuse my little coughing voice that I got going on here, recovering from a cold. And uh, feel free to reach out whenever you want. Have a great day. And download WMIX. Thanks and bye.